morning, everyone. I want to welcome you to Beach Park Baptist Church in our virtual Sunday school hour. Uh, we are looking at January the 3rd, 2021. Happy New Year's. Uh, today we'll be doing our Sunday school lesson virtually for the next couple weeks. Uh, kind of be expecting some different things. Um, I apologize today for um, some of the things that just didn't work out. It's Sunday morning. You're seeing this just a few hours later. And, uh, you know, I came in this morning excited to record and, and put this message down. Kind of checked on some things and noticed the microphone didn't work like it did yesterday. Uh, the shirt I picked out for this morning, uh, I'll try to show you a picture now, but it didn't work out. It was kind of doing this little psychedelic thing. And so uh, I kind of put on my hoodie just to kind of cut down from that distraction. So, uh, I mean, God is good. Our clothes may change, but God never does. Our year may go to a different calendar year, but uh, God's still on the throne. And so uh, I'm excited about this lesson today. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be going through our Sunday school lessons. Uh, me or some other gentleman from our church will be kind of rotating in and out. And so be expecting some, some good things, but, you know, just be faithful. Continue to watch us live on Facebook and YouTube. And then also as we post things for the children, as we post things for Sunday school, and the teens, um, just kind of be up to date. And uh, as we go through this process, uh, we're just trying to provide some type of, of Bible study for you. And so I hope that you are watching in the comfort of your home and enjoying yourself this morning as we go through our lesson. So today we're going to be talking about overcoming worry. And, and the point for us is God's presence provides a way out of worry. And that's key for us. And, and we're going to be talking in Psalms chapter 23, verses 1 through 6, a, a passage that you probably know very well. Uh, and so if you have your Bibles, turn to Psalms chapter 23. And uh, we'll kind of read this together as we go through. And um, I know that you are, are looking forward to the New Year's. I hope that you had a um, good end to the New Year's. Uh, a good start to the New Year's, if you will. Uh, I know some of you, uh, like me, are excited just to kind of put 2020 behind us. And um, this is a great lesson for us to start with in this new year as we talk about overcoming worry. So I'm going to read these verses together. If you have your Bibles or your book, follow along with me. The Bible says this, Psalms 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, thy comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So Psalms chapter 23, I, I'm excited about this. I think about David in the time that he is writing this, and, and I believe he's kind of on to something. He starts and ends this Psalms with the Lord. And just like we should start and end our days with the Lord, we're starting our year with the Lord this morning. And so uh, let's focus on this chapter for just a few moments. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this day. God, thank you just for this time that we can uh, gather together, maybe not in person, but uh, spiritually, that we're working together through our Bible study this morning as we uh, go throughout our lives and our families, that we would uh, overcome worry and the fear that we have in our lives. And Lord, that we would just be strengthened through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So when we look at the setting of this passage, it's, it's probably the most loved of David's psalms. We know David's story really well. If you've uh, read the Bible, we know he was a shepherd boy watching over his father's flock. He um, would have some exciting adventures. He would become... Um, a great general war leader. He would become the king of Israel and, and just a, a powerful story. Um, when we look at this, he, he see that we see David's faithfulness uh, to God, his confidence and trust in the Lord, uh, even when he's facing the giants in his life. He has faith and trust in the Lord. And so we can put this to our personal lives. We're going to face issues. Uh, there's going to be uh, potential situations that might cause concern in our lives. And uh, you know that concern can really snowball into worry. Um, you know, it, if you know the snowball effect, it, it starts really small and it grows, it gets bigger and bigger until it's too hard to handle. Well, concern can, can sometimes turn into that snowball effect and it just out of control 
gets worse and worse until it becomes full out worry and we can't handle it anymore. And so we want to focus on how we can turn that worry, that fear into the presence of God and how we can overcome that worry. And so uh, the world will certainly offer a, a ton of things for us to worry about. You talk about the family safety, uh, financial concern, financial concerns, uh, maybe your job status, the the health uh, concerns. You're maybe you're looking at retirement and uh, your job situation. You're looking at someone else's health in your family. Maybe they've gone through an accident or they've got cancer or things like that. Um, you might have a relationship concern. Maybe your spouse situation. Maybe your uh, relationship with your children or a family member is on. Uh, strife, And so uh, you look at that as possible worry or concerns, or you might even look at your future decisions, what you're going to do in life, uh, how you're going to handle different things that come up. Those are all things that can cause us worry. And worry affects us physically, mentally, and spiritually. And so Psalms chapter 23 paints this beautiful picture of what it means to let go of our worries and let God take care of our situations. Uh, the point again in this message is God's presence provides a way out of worry. And the book gives us several questions throughout the, the lesson. I'll try to point out some of those questions as you follow along. But the first question is, um, how would you describe a worry-free life? And to me, I, I kind of put as refreshing, you know, that refreshing calming sensation you get when worry leaves you and the situation passes. As uh, we read these verses again, as we kind of dive a little bit deeper into these verses, um, I'll read them and then I'll just kind of give you a few things from my mind uh, on these verses. The Bible says, verse 23, or chapter 23, verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Um, if you've ever dealt with worry, you have probably felt that calming sensation that comes when worry leaves you at the end of that time. For example, the other day, uh, we're at the house and my wife is at work and me and the children are at home and, and um, I was cleaning up a little bit, kind of going from room to room and I just stepped in one of the other rooms and the kids were playing in the, in the living room, playing the Nintendo Wii and I heard uh, the hurt cry. You know what I mean by the hurt cry if you have small children. There's the, the whining cry which normally comes around lunchtime or when they're not feeling well or when they want mommy or you know things like that, the whining cry. Well, this was the hurt cry, and I knew immediately that, that uh, my daughter was hurt, and so I ran into the room, and I kind of checked on her, and, and my son is, is apologizing profusely at, at the situation, and normally I would say no blood, no foul, but I picked her up, and there was blood coming down her face, and what had happened was uh, he was playing the Nintendo Wii, and he had taken the, the remote, and he was swinging it like a bat for the game, and he accidentally hit my daughter, who was just passing through, um, which I've told her, you, you don't pass through when, when we're playing the Nintendo Wii. But uh, she's young, she didn't really understand, but she got too close and my son hit her. And uh, I was concerned, uh, worried because there was blood coming down, she had cut right above her eye and I wasn't sure how deep it was or if it needed stitches or, or what I needed to do. And so I just kind of assessed the situation and I called my wife and I said, hey, uh, we're going to come and check on you. Uh, we're going to come and see you. And uh, also, Adeline's got uh, blood run down her face. And so, kind of ex uh, explained the situation and we came over. And um, I, I was worried the whole time we were driving that, you know, maybe he might have hit her eye in a way that might have caused her to uh, damage her eye. I wasn't sure how it happened or what happened. And then, um, you know, the cut. I, I know it was swollen at the time, but, you know, is that cut need stitches? Does uh, the scarring, the, the, the situation with the eye is very uh, intense for me because I don't want her to have that uh, vision affected. So I was kind of worried. And, um, you know, we drove over to my wife's work and, and she came out and checked on her just for a second. And the other girls that she worked with came out and talked to us and checked on her. And, and they were all kind of like, okay, this isn't that bad. And, and I know that, that I was worried about the situation, but there was that calming presence when, when we drove up and my wife came out and kind of checked on her. Uh, it kind of made me go, 
And then when, when uh, my wife clocked out of work just a few minutes later, she uh, was able to take my daughter to the doctor. The doctor checked her out, cleaned her up a little bit, checked the eye out. And um, it, it was a, a calming sensation that came when um, we were in the presence of my wife and the doctor checked her out. Uh, it was that, that worry that had left and you know the situation when you might have received some potential bad news and you get that call back that says, ah, it, it's not as bad. We can handle this. We can do this. Or maybe the financial situation, you, you might get your paycheck or you might receive a gift that um, you can put towards some, some bills or something. And, and you know that feeling of just that refreshing, calming sensation. And we understand that that worry can lead to uh, a lot of things in the mind, the body, and the soul. And we also look at the presence of God and how He provides comfort for us. And David knew a lot about shepherding as he is writing this. Uh, the Bible talks and mentions uh, shepherds a lot throughout the passage. And uh, the job description of a shepherd is uh, to lead their flocks to pasture and waters, to protect them from predators, uh, to keep them from wandering off. <laughs> and uh, we, we think about the individuals uh, that takes care of the flock, the shepherd. Um, we as individuals know that God is our shepherd and he's often trying to keep us out of trouble or keep us from wandering off. Um, but I love this first verse as we talk about the verses here. It says, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh, we are all taken care of. Uh, we really don't lack for anything. Uh, our shepherd provides for us. Uh, the green pastures and the still waters sounds great to me. You talk about the rest, the comfort that this uh, scene portrays for us. Um, I look at the shepherd and the importance of his job. The shepherd uh, prepares the land, uh, gets the right place for the flock to go. He cuts away the thicket as he is making a path for the flock. He's leading them away from the rocks, the cliffs, the danger. And the shepherd would also dam up the, the creeks and the streams to uh, make that still pond, that still waters, uh, so the sheep would relax and drink. And so uh, the sheep would be at comfort and they would uh, eat and rest. And all this work the shepherd has done comes to verse 3, for this reason he restoreth my soul. Uh, this can mean the physical health, but uh, I tend to think about the spiritual renewal, the restoration that takes place uh, in the presence of the Lord. Our shepherd provides for us. Our shepherd guides us. Uh, the sheep by nature are not very smart. Uh, the sheep are prey animal. They're prone to uh, predators. They depend heavily on their vision. I looked up a little things about uh, the sheep. They have um, excellent peripheral vision to see behind them and uh, without turning their heads. But they have poor depth perception. And they can't see immediately in front of their noses. And so um, the sight may not be great, but the sheep's hearing is excellent. They know the shepherd's voice. They follow the shepherd's voice. And so it's important that the shepherd continues to talk to them and call out to them to show them the direction through his voice. And even though we can't see God, we feel his presence. And if we call out to him, if we are speaking to him, he'll guide us, he'll lead us in the way that we should go. And so uh, as we go through this world, uh, I feel very similar to a sheep. <laughs> We, we are prey animals. The world is, is uh, looking and, and would love to chew us up and to spit us out. Um, we often wander off in our own direction, trying to find our own way rather than following the shepherd, the Lord. Uh, we have terrible depth perception. We fall into sinful ways many times uh, and daily that we struggle through this sinful nature. And so uh, our shepherd provides for us. Our shepherd guides us. Our shepherd renews us. Uh, when the world beats us down, God lifts us up. Uh, when the world tries to blind our eyes, God gives us sight. When the world uh, is, is, has us dead to rights, God gives us victory. And the expression, uh, the pass of righteousness, comes to mind here. And uh, this, the right pass, the straight pass, uh, we all find our way through life. It's better to have someone with us. Uh, with a friend, we feel less scared. With a friend, we have someone to talk to. With a friend, uh, we can kind of bounce our ideas off of one another. Uh, with a friend, you can have a sense of companionship, camaraderie, as you go through those challenges. Well, God renews us with His presence. Um, 
we need his presence in the next couple of verses as we go through these times. Uh, you look at these in the next couple of verses, we're, we're going to need God with us by our side. Uh, and question number two out of our book says, what areas in life do you tend to worry about? Each of us are dealing with different things. Pray for one another. Encourage one another as no doubt we are all going through some really tough times in life. And then verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of a shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of thine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. So we see our shepherd provides for us, he guides us, he renews us, and then he protects us. Uh, when we go through the valley of the shadow of death, we think of ourselves as defenseless, sheep walking in the darkness. Uh, we know that Satan and other uh, predators are out there lurking in the shadows, uh, waiting to pounce on us. And, and it's easy to feel helpless or hopeless in uh, life. But God as our shepherd protects us. Uh, his presence gives us comfort. His presence brings uh, courage for us. Uh, in life, there's a few things we can control. There are many more things that we cannot control. Uh, but we can control if we will allow fear and worry to rule over us. And uh, if we allow the Lord to be the shepherd of our lives, we can see that uh, we're not going at this alone, that he gives us that strength and that courage. So when we're going through deep darkness in life, we can uh, be comfortable and comforted because the Lord is with us. And David uses the rod and the staff to show the comfort here. Uh, the rod is, is kind of like the club, the, uh, the billy stick, if you will. Um, it's used for protection from predators as they're trying to uh, get the sheep. They can kind of swing and swat at them or even hit them. Um, it was used for correction for the sheep as they were following the voice that they're trying to wander off. You might correct the sheep to, to understand, to listen to the voice. And so the rod was important. And then the staff is known as the long walking stick with a crook in the neck. Um, the hook could be used to uh, fish out the fallen sheep that had fallen into the thicket. And so that brings comfort to know that uh, when we fall, God will pick us up. Um, when we're in the midst of our enemies, God is going to protect us. And so we've got to uh, understand the comfort of the shepherd as he uses those tools. As we go through life, uh, we may need some correction. We may need some protection. And then we may need some rescue. And so um, verse or the question three is, how have you been assured of God's presence during difficult times? And that brings us to verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. One of my favorite things to do when I get home is to uh, change my clothes, take a shower, and uh, get into my cozy sweatpants and t-shirts. And, and it brings me comfort, brings me joy to be at the house in my cozy clothes. Uh, well, God desires that we live in His presence. And by His goodness, we dine at the King's table in the comfort of his presence. Um, the phrase, the house of the Lord, identifies um, as the place we encounter God. And I know on April 2nd, 2000, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I received the, the gift of salvation. Uh, and I said, Lord, come into my heart and save me. And I began that relationship with God for all eternity. And as a follower and believer of Jesus Christ, I am in the presence of God on earth. And when my time here on earth is done, I'll be in the presence of God for all eternity in heaven. And the world is, is not my home. I'm just passing through. And so no matter what I face in life, I know that my shepherd is right here with me. He provides comfort and peace. And, and not even death can separate me from the love and the presence of God. The fourth question you'll see is, um, what does dwelling in the house of the Lord look like? in a believer's life. And then the last question, what are some ways that you can help others overcome worry? My friends, this journey is tough. This life is hard. We're in this together. As followers and believers of Jesus Christ, we want to encourage one another. We want to lift up one another. And in this time of uncertainty and everything that we've gone through this past year, uh, many of you have reached out to loved ones, friends and neighbors. Continue to do that in this new year as we um, point people to Jesus Christ. As we are in the presence of God in the midst of uh, the pandemic, in the midst of the health crisis, in the midst of loved ones that are passing away around us, Lord, that we would just be in your presence. 
today and focus on our relationship with him. And so um, I want to thank you for joining us. I'd like to close us off with a word of prayer again. Um, continue to pray for our church and our church family, those in our community as they go through this time. Um, we're doing all of our services virtually to kind of help limit the spread of COVID virus that might come from our church. And so uh, we're doing everything virtual. It's, it's difficult to talk to a camera. I wish you all were here. Um, right now I'm in the children's department and normally on a Sunday, man, I mean, this place is, is packed and the kids are running around and it's crazy and it's loud. And I miss that. But today we're just kind of going through this uh, process. So encourage one another, love one another. I hope that you have read your Sunday school book. If you don't have a book, call the church office this week and we can make sure that you get a Sunday school book uh, for the classes for us to follow along together in our Sunday school hour. All right. Hope you have a great day. God bless. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this day. God, thank you just for, again, this opportunity we have to, to be alive, to, to worship you with our daily actions and reactions, the way that we live our lives. Lord, we thank you for the power that you can give us to overcome worry in our lives. And God, that we would focus on you and your presence in the midst of everything we're going through in our days, and that we would comfort one another. In Jesus' name, amen.